Hey bitch, it's Thursday and I'm Misty Eyes, your queen of the week. And, um, yeah, I'm wearing the same hair and makeup from last week because it's still last week for me. I'm actually skipping ahead because I have to go out of town and I'm traveling. Um, and I'll be with family and I will not be bringing drag with me. And I didn't want to ask somebody to substitute for me on a Thursday. I wanted to do my job because I want to develop a fan following for me every Thursday. And I didn't want to let you down, especially so soon. So I'm recording my video a little bit early. But it will be posted on Thursday. If I can't do it myself, I'm going to have one of the other girls do it for me. But, that being said, this week's topic is pageants. Selected for you by Portia Lynn Aquarius, your Wednesday whore. Beauty pageants. Beauty pageants are a very big deal in the gay community and the drag community. But how big of a deal are they really? Do you need a title or a crown on your head to be fierce and amazing? Hmm... Yes and no. Part of me is all about pageants. In fact, when I first started doing drag, I thought, genuinely thought, that nobody would book you in a bar unless you had a crown on your head or a title. Because a little gay boy watching, I'm like, oh, she's Miss Continental, or she's Miss USA, or she's Miss whatever. Starstruck, right? And I genuinely thought that. So I had started doing drag, and I quickly entered this competition. I was rotted. I didn't know anything about anything. It was horrible. Like, literally bad. Um, and then I got discouraged. I'm like, I will never win. These girls are amazing. What am I doing? So I quit. So I quit drag for, like, two years. And when I came back is when I realized that instead of focusing on pageants and being this, you know fierce pageantry girl, I'm just going to focus on my heart, and that's the community. And, I don't know, out of the blue, my name just blew up, like, <laughs> you know, in the year 2005, I was doing drag every single day, and I really realized, you know, that I don't need to have a crown to be amazing. And so, no, the bottom line of my story is I don't think you need to have a crown to be fierce and amazing. I truly don't. I don't. Because you can be fierce and amazing and not do pageants. Now, do I like pageants? Obviously, I just competed at Miss Continental this year. My heart and mind have changed. Meaning, when you, for example, play Angry Birds, you want to do level one, you want to do level two, you want to do level three. And eventually, you want to do every level in the game, right? That's all the fun. So when you conquer one aspect of female impersonation, you want to conquer another aspect as well, right? So did I. So, yes. After not having been a pageant holder, I have decided to pursue it. But it's really a lot of hard work. Meaning, you have to do a lot of things that you never thought you'd have to do. And it's re-educating yourself on to be something and act a certain way. And, yeah, I find it very challenging and I love it. So, therefore, I love pageants. But, let me also backtrack and tell you my number one pet peeve. Something I truly, 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 truly hate. And to all the new girls out there, please don't do this. Because everyone will laugh at you. Alright, this is what I hate. In gay people, in um, the world, gay bonics is what I call it. When we say something, and we kind of stretch it a little bit. Like, for example, I live in Paris, Tex I live in Paris, but they mean Texas, not France. Um, but they don't tell you because they want you to think whatever they want you to think. Gay people are really good at gay bonics. Gay people do this a lot, especially when they're talking about dick size. Like, bitch, I have a nine-inch dick. And I'm like, who are you trying to convince? Me or yourself? Because, by the way, I used to hang out with this guy who was Italian. And he told everyone he had a nine-inch dick all the time. That's all he talked about all the time. I'm like, okay, we got it. You have a nine-inch dick. 
we became really good friends. And we were at the nude beach, and he fell asleep and got a full erection. Mama, I kid you not, he had a four-inch dick. Um, because I was really annoyed with him saying he had a nine-inch dick all the time, I took a picture on my cell phone. And he had a very specific penis, because it was like he was circumcised all the way around, except for not on this little piece on the side, where it was... It's hard to explain. Or he was circumcised, but when it was healing, the head of his penis attached to a piece of the shaft. So it was kind of like he... I don't know how to explain it, but needless to say, it was obviously his dick in the photograph. Because I've never seen that before. Anyways, so the next couple nights, he was like, Oh, I'm an Italian stallion. My dick is nine inches, blah, 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 blah. Oh, really? Does this look like nine inches to you? <gasps> Bitch. He never said it again. At least in front of me. Because, Mama, you can't say your dick is nine inches all day long. It doesn't mean it's true. Now, the reason I'm talking about that is because as a show hostess and an MC, as a show director, girls come up to me all the time. And they're like, I'm fierce. I'm amazing. Just because you say you're fierce and amazing does not mean you are. Now my pet peeve is when they're like, I miss Washington, D.C., oh, I miss this, or I miss that. Now, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, um, I was doing this show, and this girl came, and she was visiting from out of town, and I, it was before I really started to get annoyed with this. People tell me how fierce they were, instead of just showing up and being fierce. And she was like, I miss this, I miss that, I miss this, I miss that. And I'm like, okay, fine, you can come do the show, whatever. So I introduced her to the stage. Clearly, looking at her, not only was she not fierce, it looked like she'd never done drag in her life. So I was like, um, please welcome to the stage. This next entertainer is brand new, never performed before. Please give her love and lots of, you know, whatever. And I was actually genuinely being nice, meaning be very forgiving. She doesn't know what she's doing. Let her turn it for you. She got, came off the stage, and she came up to me, and she was like, how dare you, you fucking bitch, blah, blah, blah. Um, I miss this, I miss that, I miss this, and I miss that. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot. Write those down for me. <laughs> this is where I got a little shady. She wrote down all her titles for me, and I went, and I said it on the microphone. I said, this next entertainer is fierce and amazing. She's a seven-time title holder, the current reigning Miss Washington, D.C. She's the current reigning Miss whatever, this, that, this, that. Mama, I called her to the stage with the only introduction. She didn't make any money. Because <laughs> they looked at her like, well, what happened? Recently, that same situation happened. I think it was not, was it this Sunday? It was last Sunday, two Sundays ago. I was hosting for another girl that was out of town. There was somebody visiting from Miss... And she was like, introduced me as Miss Whatever. And I looked at her... And it was a daytime show. And I'm like, I know the sun makes people look rotted, but I didn't say that. I just thought it. I'm like, okay. Knowing that if I don't do it, she's going to come for me. So I'll introduce her however she wants. The raining miss so-and-so, this and that. And the audience just kind of laughed at her. My point is, <sighs> it happens all the time. Just because you're a title holder, it doesn't mean you're amazing. I've been to so many pageants here in Fort Lauderdale that I've seen with my own eyeballs. That pageants are rigged, or pageants are fixed, or pageants are promised. I went to a pageant once where the girl that won should not have placed top ten. There's no way she won. There was an uproar. People were throwing ashtrays. It was disgusting. It was horrible. It was pathetic. I've also been to pageants where there was only one contestant... And she won. Even when, if there was a single other contestant, or no matter how many contestants there were, she would not have made top ten. But she won. So if you go and tell me you're Miss this bar and that bar from somewhere else, I don't give a fucking shit. At all. I don't give a rat's ass. At all. I don't care. You can have 37 crowns in your head. It does not matter. Unless. If you are a title, a prelim to a Miss Continental, America, USA, or one of the major pageants of a national system, then I might think, oh, she's
She's got her shit together. But you can't walk up and say, I missed this bar from over there, and I missed that bar from over there, because that shit's retarded. Because I know that bar pageants are often rigatoni down, and there are a lot of times you can't get contestants for these bar pageants. Doesn't mean you're fierce, it doesn't mean you're amazing. But more importantly, a lot of times, when, especially new girls, when they enter pageants, their hair is borrowed, their dress is borrowed, their jewelry is borrowed, their shoes are borrowed, they didn't do their own hair or makeup. And I'm supposed to believe you're amazing? Okay, let's go with it. No. So now, my thoughts are on beauty pageants. Yes, they're important. Yes, they're amazing. Yes. They're important and amazing if they have a prestigious system. But in general, just because you're a title holder, it doesn't mean you're fierce or amazing. It doesn't mean I think of you any better. Because it just isn't true. true. So, pageants, are they important? Yes. My goal is to be a Miss Continental. Um, maybe one day. I'm definitely not going this year because the last... Several months have been extremely tight on me financially. I'm going through it. Uh, I came back from Chicago with no money and then found out that I had to move <laughs> and um, come up with first class and security of a new place and then pay for two apartments for four months. It's not fun at all. Um, so, yeah, if I don't have money right now, I'm probably. <laughs> I've always been a starving artist, but if I'm flat broke right now, I'm not going to have the money to invest or save to do a prelim, let alone a national pageant. So I'm definitely going to take this year off, but I'm planning on returning to Continental. I love Miss Continental, and I want to be back. All right. Now, last week. Last week, we talked about prejudice and racism. Um, and I'm doing this video early, so I didn't see the last couple girls. But being Thursday, I got to see Monday through Wednesday. And I will say Monday, Pedro, your video was much better. I really got into your video this week. Um, I like that your wig wasn't falling off your head. Um, it was kind of getting in your face, so you were back to touching your hair a little bit. So I would say, um, but I guess I want to say that it just comes with time. Katana, loved your biracial face, loved your biracial hair. And by the way, is it Naked Week this week? Because... Pedro didn't even have a shirt on. You had a bra on. I forgot to see what um, Portia was wearing. But I'm clearly not naked, so... I guess it's not a theme. And for that, I thank you. Portia Lynn Aquarius. Um, got into your messy room and your fiancé on the bed. That was a nice little surprise. But why are you living out of boxes, girl? It's not fun to move. Um, why would you box up all your shit if you're thinking about moving? I didn't do that shit until I was moving. And even then, um, I drug my feet and I kind of was still packing when the movers were there. <laughs> oh, my life sucks right now. But yeah, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. True story. Alright, so, um, yeah. I like that you don't give a shit. But I think maybe you might have been a teacher in a previous life. Because the way you talk is like a teacher. Like, alright kid, this is what you're going to learn today, and you're going to fucking like it. <laughs> it's like, girl, she sat me down and she's not even talking to me. And unfortunately, um, I have not been able to see uh, Lady P's racism video, but I'm sure it was bloody fantastic. Anyways, this was your Thursday bitch. Love you. Kisses. Oh, and if you have the thought, please pray for me. Actually, while this video is being aired, I am hanging out with my family in Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah. I decided to go last minute, and I can say this now publicly because um, I'm not telling most of my family I'm going there, but by the time this video airs, I'll already be there for a couple of days. Um... It's my cousin's wedding, and six months ago, I got her invitation, and my brother was, like, living with me, saying, oh, I want to go, but I don't want to go by myself. I'm like, um, I call me. I'll call. I basically promised him if he went, I would go with him. And, uh, he moved. He lives there now. Anyways, long story short, he called me and was like, hey, do you remember that time you promised me if I went to the wedding, you'd go? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, I'm going. I'm like, you live there. Long story short, he basically twisted my arm and, um... I've been going through it a little, uh, the move has not been good on me, and just going through it in my own head, in my own space, and 
Oh, I'm getting emotional. Um, I decided that it was time that I needed to go see family. And even if I'm scared to death to see my aunts and uncles and my dad and people that hate me, it's my siblings that love me. And that's why I'm going. Because my siblings over the last five years, I think, have one by one, some of them come down to visit Orlando or Disney or whatever. And I've gotten to know their kids. And I'm really excited to see my siblings. It's the older people that I'm scared to death. Because I might be in my 30s, but I feel 12 years old. You know? And looking at them, they're like... Ah! Um, so I'm scared shitless, long story short. I'm going anyway. Um, it's going to be a surprise. I'm staying with my sister. And uh, nobody knows I'm coming. And hopefully it goes over well. And hopefully I'm still alive to come back and do next week. Because next week is my theme. And it's actually um, an Ask Misty. This uh, We got to pick whatever we wanted. Um, our channel, the, the cool thing about our channel is we're picking very controversial topics. And I love it. Um, so I decided, what is more controversial than bisexuality? And um, this is actually an Ask Misty. Uh, on my personal channel, I've been doing Ask Misty's, and I'm actually really close to doing them again. I promise they're coming really soon. Um, it's from an Ask Misty. A girl was wrote in and told me that her fiancé and her... They're very, very much in love. He's amazing. He's perfect. They're getting married. But they were having the conversation, which I don't think any couple should really have, where how many people have you slept with? How many boyfriends have you had? Are you a whore? Type of thing. Because no matter what answer you give, it could have a negative reaction. Anyways, his answer was honest, which is kudos, but he mentioned to her that he had dated guys. That's where she's having a panic attack and she's flicking at, flipping out. She's like, I'm getting ready to get married. Is my boyfriend gay? Is he bi? Is there such a thing? Oh my God. Could he be straight and still have sex with guys? Um, I don't know if this was a regular gig. I don't know if this was a one-time gig. I don't know if he had many ex-boyfriends or just one. Or if he even had a boyfriend or just had sex with a guy. She didn't say. So, mm, next week's theme is bisexuality. Does it exist? Is it real? And... What does it mean when a straight guy has sex with a guy? Does it mean they're gay? Who knows? I want the girls to tell me. I want to find out what their answer is. Anyways, this is Misty Eyes, your bitch on Thursday. Loving you is easy, and see you next week.